Okay, I'm back on the Norton today, and I'm going to do some sandblasting. <clears throat> I got all the parts in for the head. I got all the new valve guides and um, valves, and my gasket kit just came in. I got that. Um, where's the cylinder? I think the cylinder... Yeah, there's a cylinder in there. I got to sandblast that as well, too. That's good. I got the pistons and rings to get that board out. So, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to get this thing. Um, the engine, if I can get the engine all bolted back up together, I got to flush this out, really clean it up. And, uh, uh, put that in my pocket. A little battery for the kids' uh, drone. Not to fix. Anyways, I want to get this off inspect it all clean it all up flush it all out this this bolt back here is kind of loose i want to reseal this you know the one thing i don't understand you know this was supposed to be for the uh uh what they used to call them but distributor before the distributors oh my god my brain's fried um i don't know but they used them back in the 60s well, this bike here is a uh, factory stock, 1970, and that hole's not cut in there. And this is a 71, and the hole's cut in there. And they had didn't use that uh, distributor since the 60s, so why all of a sudden is, is it in a case in 1971? And these cases, like I can check the years by the number on the cases. I don't quite understand that if that's what that was for. Um, yeah, so I'll take that apart, clean that up. And uh, man, it'd be nice to get this engine back together quick. Not like not like that green one here where it took me a couple of years. <laughs> I get that back together. I actually, I'm gonna bolt those cases. I gotta, I'm gonna bolt those cases in the engine, put them in here loosely, because this affects, this position here affects the, see how it affects the height of the swing arm? So I've really got to have that, that engine bolted in here and into the front isoelastic to get the exact positioning of that uh, um, swing arm. And I bit the bullet and had them send my uh, parts from Port here into Sarnia. It cost me another 50 bucks. Just pisses me off. Still haven't got my tank though, but I'm going to have to bite the bullet on that too. So I can put the shocks in and get the right height on that. But uh, before I can do any sandblasting, I gotta clean this bench up, which I'm doing. And I got all the old black carbon sand out of here. It's in that bucket below. And I'm gonna put in the new uh, glass beads. But I, I wanna fix this bench up first too. I bought that bench a year or two ago, I think. And to put my vise on it, but it, it's just a uh, 16 gauge sheet metal on there. It's a solid bench, but it's too, it's too flexible, you know, way too flexible for uh, grinding and hammering and everything. And I don't have any quarter inch. It would be nice to, maybe I should price it. Probably cheaper to buy a quarter inch plate than it is to buy a three quarter inch plywood. Quarter inch plate versus three quarter inch plywood. Because I think a sheet of three quarter inch plywood is uh, 80 bucks plus tax. Unless I just go over with a half inch sheet. That'd be probably strong enough once I screw it and bolt it into this. And, uh, yeah, so I got to figure that out today. I'm going to get all this stuff off of it. And uh, then what I want to do is uh, get my bench grinder, my buffer, my chain sharpening jig here. And, uh, and, and get everything on that one bench. I have my buffer, grinder, everything, all, all in this one bench in here. That's the plan. Then nice to put some plywood or something on that wall too. So I think I'm gonna start on that. <clears throat> well, I got the sandblaster empty and then I can get back on the Norton. Got it all cleaned off. Got a piece of three quarter inch plywood. <clears throat> and uh, I got enough left over there. I varnished both of them, I'm gonna put two or three coats of varnish on there. Give them a couple more years of life. I'm gonna put that other piece across the back here. And then I gotta run some hydro in there. But uh, now this, this bench is 
<laughs> messy again. <laughs> but I got all the power tools off of here, including the drill press. So I can get the drill press on here, which is a, a, you know four inches lower than this table, so a little easier to work with. My bench grinders, buffer. I actually got a pipe clamp here too I can mount. Probably put that over there. And uh, put the vise back in the corner here. I got those holes marked. Got it uh, routed around the edge. And I varnish it, I sanded the bottom two inches and varnish it so I don't get any slivers if I run my hand along there. So I'll put a couple more coats of varnish on there. And a uh, piece of paintbrush on there. Let that dry and give it another coat an hour or two. Still gotta fix this generator for a buddy and I got a chainsaw in here somewhere I gotta fix. <laughs> it's been sitting here for a couple of weeks. Okay, I gotta kinda get this stuff done so I can uh, be more organized to work on this uh, Norton here. And uh, get the heads and cylinder sandblasted. I got it all cleaned out, the sandblaster. And here's, this is glass beads, 50 bucks for a bag, little round beads, not, not crushed glass. So yeah, that's it for now. Follow up a little bit here. Got the vise on, got a piece of two foot by three foot steel on the end there. Just so for grinding and cutting and if I've got to do any tacks or welding. And uh, I've got it through, um, the vise is through this steel, through this three quarter inch plywood and then through another uh, three quarter inch plywood on the bottom. Well, through the steel plate of the, of the table. And then, yeah, another three quarter inch piece on the bottom. So it's, it's a lot more beefed up now. Before I could rock the thing and the whole table would go up and down. So I've got the backing plate on. I need some hydro there, here first though. I'm gonna put a, a hydro bar there so I can plug in all my tools here. And, uh, but the mail came today from the States, so I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet. I had to, I had on this stuff, 43 bucks more. I think I'm going to have to order that tank. Be all the stuff for the Norton. There's that old, uh, that's the metal flake green. This thing shouldn't be worth a dollar. You know, I paid 17 bucks for it, but I'm gonna you wait. I'm gonna make something nice out of that. Actually, no dents in it, which is good. The nuts are gone, but. There's all my ice elastics uh, spacers with uh, the rubber boots. That's why I bought it because the rubber boots and the two, uh, uh, three of the three of the ice elastics I was missing. But then I found two. But that was pretty cheap for all that. This is the type that or the top uh, ice elastic on the motor. I got I got the rubber mounts. I got the bolts. Um, seems like I'm missing some. Oh no, maybe that's all I need. There's the three pieces there. So that's good. I can mount that motor. And this is a brand new pair of uh, uh, DOT shock absorbers. They're British. Made in England. Yeah, they look pretty light duty. Pretty light duty, I think. All right, and let's see how it works. this thing roughly set up. 
I'm gonna see if I can clean up this head and the ports. It's a pretty dirty shape. And I'll see what happens here. Oh, I gotta stick the stuff back in there. I've never tried this glass bead stuff before. It goes in there. There's the gun. Maybe I can push it in with my hand. Got that there. This goes here. Shut the door. I got the vacuum cleaner outside this time. And uh, we'll see how that works. Hope if I can get this thing up high enough, we'll see. Yeah, let's shorten this up here. Might be able to see that a bit. I don't know. See if it's going to work. Let's see if this thing works. Have any of that sand still stuck in there? Come on. Okay, I got it working better. The hose, this hose that picks up the sand was still full of that black carbon sand. The black carbon sand was too coarse. It's too coarse in there and it just binds right up and it, the, the line was packed full of it. So as soon as I cleaned that, it'll work much better. So that's it there. Combustion ports are all cleaned right out. I still got to take the exhaust guides out, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the barbecue, get it up to 300 degrees, bang them out and then bang the new ones in, all four new ones in at the same time. And then, uh, when I bring it to the guy, he'll ream them to the right size. He'll ream them and, uh, and then do the valves. He'll put minimum three angles on the valves, maybe four. That's what he does. And, uh, yeah, next I'll do the cylinders. I think I'll like the barbecue though. I think I'll light the barbecue and I'll stick that in the barbecue and pop those out. I got this bench here pretty much done for now. I still gotta, I'd like to build some shelves in here, put some tools up there. But uh, I got three outlets I wired in. I know these aren't in conduit, but it's kind of just te temporary. It's, uh, it's not, I just got it plugged in there. I just got it plugged in like that. A couple staples. In the summertime, I don't want to go up there now because there's a great 30 pound freaking raccoon living up there. And you can bet he's snuggled up against my heater pipe up there. I can't get him out. Another month or two when it warms up and he comes out, I'll catch him and get rid of him. I don't want to go up there because he's right beside the hatch there. <laughs> there's the hatch in the ceiling. He's right there. I don't want to go up there and get in a fight with that thing. So then I'll crawl up here and I'll hardwire that in to this outlet here. This outlet is uh, has power to it 24-7 uh, all the time for the garage door, power garage door. But all of these lights, uh, they're on three different switches, one, two, and then this third bank. So I can't wire it to one of these and, and unless I got the switch on, then I got power here. So I got my drill press wired into here. It's a little handier, it's close to the vise and everything. But what, I wanna make a shelf for all my drill bits uh, maybe up in here somewhere or in behind. So I got all different types of drill bits 
even for porcelain. Hole saw bits, maybe or maybe a cabinet under here. I gotta get that generator. I bought that a year or two ago. I still haven't had it out and get it going. So I heard it didn't have spark. <laughs> I gotta fix that one. I gotta fix that generator over there for a buddy. And I gotta fix that chainsaw. So I gotta get that done this week, I guess. But I got this bench kind of ready. It's I got kind of wasted space back here, unless I build a cabinet uh, or something in behind it because I can't push this back and sandblast. Uh, there's that white uh, glass beads. That stuff works a lot better. And what I'd like to do is drill a hole through the wall right there, fish this pipe outside so it's always out there. I just got to run out there and plug my vacuum cleaner in. That's, that's what I want to do. But I need another a couple more feet of hose. Got to keep an eye out for that. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind building a nice shelf right across there. Like out maybe 12 inches so I could put some baskets on there and stuff. I need another chunk of plywood to fit in here. Four foot by uh, 30 inches about. So that bench is pretty much done. But I got another idea here I'm going to do. And uh, you might want to do this in your shop depending on how secure it is. But uh, when I worked in a in a garage or a shop, you know, you always had your mechanic toolboxes, the the three layers, and you always locked it up every night, especially when you're working with a bunch of different mechanics and customers and people coming in and out of the shop. You know, they could easily grab some of your tools, or they always borrowing your tools, you know, and then they lose them and forget them, especially when you got snap-on tools. A lot of my uh, lower end, like up to three quarters of an inch, are snap-on, and most of my sockets are snap-on. Um, you know, you don't like leaving them out too much, but I don't know. Who cares at this point? It's my garage. So what I'm going to do, and this is the handiest thing, and I did this at uh, uh, when I worked for a maintenance mechanic shop there at the rental store. I kept fishing into the drawer every day, grabbing wrenches, putting them back into the drawer, in and out, fishing, f trying to find the right size, you know. And I'm going to tell you, when I set this up, this is by far, a lot of guys do this the most practical way to use wrenches. And I'm gonna hang them on the wall here, metric, standard, like the biggest wrench to the smallest wrench, and then, uh, you know, from the uh, uh, smallest wrench to the biggest wrench with the metric one, so they kind of all fit, fit together. Could do a whole string right across, I guess. So I gotta take this, I'm gonna leave that screwdriver one in there, and I'm gonna take this board out, and I'm just taking out all the, all the stuff I had hanging up here and uh, I may put some of them back up here when I'm done but I want to get the wrenches hung up right in here it's just so much handier you know when you write right on the board you know especially now my eyes are getting bad you know you're inch and a quarter inch and a half or three quarter inch, 15 six inches. you know you write it right on you reach for it you got it and then you look at your board oh I'm missing that wrench where is it you know and then you get you fill in the blank it's it, you kind of do it like I've got all these adjustables here. But uh, it's the handiest way to use your wrenches, have your wrenches, the most access. And then I can, in those two drawers where I got all my wrenches, these are my standard ones. I actually got another drawer, standard ones over there. And these are my metric ones. Um, then I'm going to put some of my precision tools in there, like my micrometers and burner calipers and tap set because it's a pain digging them out of that lower drawer down there all the time. So I'm gonna put them into there. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. And uh, uh, I got the Norton, the head all done. I think the last, this is a day or two later, but I had this in the uh, uh, barbecue, heated up to about 300 degrees. And uh, I'd already had the intake valves out because they weren't carbon up. So I sandblast around the, the exhaust ones and it makes it a lot easier for them to come out. And uh, so I banged those out, and, it, and then I banged all four new guides in there. And they're actually, I, they don't even need reaming. Like they, usually you gotta ream them out, but you know, there's, there's free play. I gotta measure this, it might need a little, no, I got free play in there. I got a little bit, maybe a thou or so. I gotta see what the clearances are. But uh, those are in nice shape. If I don't, I'm gonna have to lap them a little bit. Make sure they're seating properly. If they're not seating properly, then, then they've got to be, uh, um, uh, I got to get the uh, seats turned down. Because whenever you press in a new guide, 
that hole in the center of the guide may not be 100% straight and the guide may not go into the hole 100%, so it might be a little bit of an angle. So then you got to cut your seat onto that angle. So I'll, I'll lap them all in and check them all. If they're all good, I'm just going to go with that because um, the seats look really good. Like, there's no damage to the seats anywhere. It's the valves, you know, the hardened seats. It's the valves that are softer that they do the damage, but there's they look really good. So um, and that'll save me 200 bucks because it's 40 bucks a hole plus tax. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. And then the next thing is to sandblast the cylinder. I think it's still in the... No, it's in here. I got all the... Uh, the lifter blocks out of them, so uh, I got to sandblast that and then uh, get that board out, and that's probably going to be fifty bucks a hole. I don't know; it could be more. Is it sixty thou over? I think I'm going. Or is it forty thou? Forty thou over. Good. Forty thou over. So not as bad. <clears throat> they don't need to go forty thou over, but uh, that's all I could find. You know, you just can't find second over, or first over, or second over. Okay, that's where I'm at now. I want to get my wrenches all hung up here, get this all cleaned up, and then uh, I'm ready to go to town on this Norton. Like, I'm trying to get everything, I'm trying to get this garage slowly over the last five years into, uh, you know, good, everything a little handier, a little bit more organized, and uh, not fighting for parts and tools and all the time and losing them. And look at this big mess back here. Like, this is crazy. I still got to clean that stuff up too. So I got, I got my carpenter tools hanging on the wall over there and then I've got my uh, plumbing tools all in here with some plumbing stuff laying around and this is all my 110 hydro tools. That's all AC DC um, tools and uh, wires and stuff like that so I got to get more organized. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Okay summer's approaching here. Or spring's approaching here pretty soon. I got to get this done. A little sloppy, but uh, it works. It's just so much handier, especially when you're getting your older and your eyes are going and you gotta look and look and just, is that a 14, 13, 15? Like you, you just look, grab, quick grab, and you know if there's one missing, you look around for it. And uh, some of them I've got doubled up, the most common ones, you know, where often you need two wrenches on something. But uh, yeah, that's just gonna be handier. I'll just keep my Phillips and flathead screwdrivers here because those are the most common ones you use and then uh, Torx and Robertson's over there I might put the picks back over there somewhere because I do use them all the time okay so uh, I think I'm gonna put this this uh, Norton head back together well I first I gotta check it out make sure it's the valves are gonna line up if not I gotta get them turned down okay I'm gonna do that now Okay, I got the new guides in there, so I want to see how the uh, the valves are, are going to be sitting on their seats. Sometimes they can be off a little bit. Put a little bit of fine lapping compound on there. I've got medium and coarse, but just want a light touch. Just put a little bit of lube in there so she spins good.
These are pretty old rubbers. Time for a new stick, I think. I don't know if you can see that on the camera there, but it's just a perfect, even margin all the way around there. Probably a little more than a mil. Look at the seat. Seat looks good. So now that I've got that one lapped into here, I gotta mark it. So that's gonna be uh, left, exhaust left. Just put a left on there. I'm still going to wash this head out. I'm going to uh, clean it one more time with a brake cleaner and then I'm going to wash it in uh, hot soapy water just to make sure I get every grit of sand out anywhere. And I've, I've washed it pretty good. I've blown it all out. But uh, I'll be doing it at least two more times. That's a problem with sand. It's can get into everything. I think I got a new one of these somewhere. I'm pretty sure I got like a red one. I got this one, but it might be too small. Yeah, too small. Come on, I gotta wipe this off here. Great clear on there. I mean, that's perfect. I don't know if you can see that. That's perfect on there. The intake valves were the one that had the most damage. They were grooved right out.
dust this off first. Compact in a light oil. We just wash that off. Put a little bit of lubricant on there. If you can see that on there, really nice fine margin on there. I could lap it in a little bit more maybe. Looks good in there, like there's no pitting or anything. Look good. They actually all look pretty good. So that one's got a much wider seat than that last one. It's good, but that seat's smaller. You can see the difference. This one's seating. This is seating really good. I'm going to have to lap that one in a little bit more. You know, the exhaust valves look good. The intake valves I'm not too happy with. I'm going to uh, take it to the shop and at least get them done. You can see the margin on this one here. Left side compared to the right side. It's nearly double the size. Two mil versus one mil probably. I could put my calipers on it, but it does, it's, you can just see it visually, it's, I don't like that, that's not right, so, I'm going to get them cut properly, they're cut on 45 degrees, and, uh, I'll take it to Tad, he's good at that, the exhaust ones look good, I'll let him have a look at those, but to me, they look really good, so, I know it, they should be all cut down, but, money, money, money. And I'll drop the cylinders off at the same time to be bored out. They're all ready. Oh, I got to sandblast that before I bring it over to him. Yeah, I got to sandblast that. Those are ready, but uh, in the meantime, 
I'm tempted to put the engine block in there to see where this sits. Maybe I'll do that. I wish I could make up a little jig rather than lift up that whole thing, put it in here. And then I, I got those shocks. I want to see how those shocks fit in here. Okay, that's the difference of sitting like this or like that. I expect it's going to be down here somewhere. Okay, let me screw around with that. Got the motor in there. Well, not the motor, but part of it, <laughs> cases. <laughs> because that, that locks the uh, cradle in place. Got to have that cradle in place to, to get the swing arm height because that affects the swing arm height. And then I can get this true dimension here, which is, I don't know if you can see that there or not, but that's, that's 12 inches center to center. So I got these brand new DOT uh, British shocks here. The bushings up here aren't the right size, so I popped it out. And um, I put it over here. But now that I got the lathe, I can make my own bushings, which is kind of nice. So I'll need a bushing for in here as well, too, but I just kind of made a quick one here. That's going to go in there. Let me find a couple bolts. Anyway, she's going to be something like that. I don't know if these are going to be too light duty or not. They look a little light, but it's going to be good enough for a mock-up. So yeah, that's 12 inches. That's going to keep my height here the same. And I got room to adjust this up or down. Could lower that shock up or down a little bit. Anyways, gearbox is all done. I'm just going to uh, take the cylinder, cylinders and the head to get um, bored out and the valve seats cut in. But my issue now is this one stud here is missing, it's broken off, the threads are pulled out. Obviously not going to get a British Wentworth uh, insert or helicoil, so I'm going to have to change that over to... Uh, standard or metric and uh, I, I'm gonna go to Peter's today and, and get his uh, 8 mil tap set again and see if that's if that hole is too big for that otherwise I'm gonna have to go to a 10 so uh, yeah I'm gonna go do that today and then flush this out I still gotta take this cover off hmm. might just do it right here in the frame it's easier Okay, that's where I'm at today so far. This is where that stud's missing at the front of the cylinder. And it's the, you know, the base stud there. And it's the only one that's bigger than all, all of these other ones. And it's been stripped out and gone. Obviously, you're not going to get a helicoil for that. So uh, what I've got is an insert, time insert. <clears throat> I tried sticking my 8 millimeter insert drill in there and the hole is already bigger than that so I'm going to have to go to the 10 and uh, the filings are going to go down in the engine but I'm going to flush this all out and take it all apart anyway so uh, it's going to be good but yeah see if we can do this insert here these bits are razor sharp I think I'll put it on maybe a lower speed here There 
we go. Wasn't chucking straight. We still not be. Now it keeps going out of. Deep enough there. A little suction cup on my <clears throat> camera stand fell off, so I'm just going to put you there for now. Just tapping out the hole for the uh, time insert. Flush these cases out really good. If I don't tear, I'm going to tear this all off. I don't know if I'm going to split the cases. Get out as much as I can before I flush it out. This tool here cuts a bevel on the top of that tapped hole and that's because the inserts flared at the top and this will seat it right in. That's the time insert, it's all one piece. It's, it's like uh, it's like 10 times stronger than a helicoil. And you can see it's got the beveled top which sits into that little insert there. I think these are 100 foot pounds. You can torque these two, something like that. You just gotta make sure you get that taper. Um, geez, that thing's loose. You gotta get that taper down enough or this thing will sit up too high and then you gotta grind it off. Shoot, this Loctite leaked out. I hope I didn't do that. And it comes with this little driver. That threads into it. And just put a little dab of Loctite on this. That's not coming out. Didn't get it down far enough. I should have tapped the threads further down. I, I just gonna have to grind that off. I didn't get it down far enough. I should have tapped. I should have tapped it down farther. But uh, I, I just gotta grind this off flush here, and it's it's good, but. That's going to be Loctited right in there solid. Alright, I guess i got to grind that off. 
Now well, there's the finished product. It's flush. It's a 10 by 1.5. So that's good. There was nothing there before. I got a I got a jug of varsal. I'm gonna flush this out, open up the drains on the bottom, circle it around, flush it, flush it, flush it. And then when I get the uh, this cover off over here, the timing cover off, the end of the crank is where the uh, the oil feed goes. It, it, from the oil pump, it runs through this cover into the end of the crank. And I'm gonna run a hose through there. I got a little uh, Varsol pump and I'll flush it and flush it, flush that engine right out. But at least that's done. I got my cylinders dropped off to be bored out. <laughs> Ridiculous price. It used to be like 40, 50 bucks a hole. Well, you can double that now. And, uh, and then I get the valves all turned down too. The intake valves needed it for sure. Needed it for sure. So uh, yeah, these are called time inserts. Really expensive kit. This this kit this kit here is I don't know probably five six hundred bucks. I bet you it's a really expensive kit, but ten times stronger than a Healy coil. I think I squished that out of there. So that worked great. Got that done. Didn't didn't install it right. There's a little bit of a trick to installing it and getting that seat cut in just right. But what I did wrong there is I didn't run that tap all the way down far enough. I was afraid of hitting the uh, camshaft. It was right underneath it. But I should have run it through a couple threads farther. And that's all I needed was two more threads, and that would have seated right in there, nice and flush. But either way, I just cut the the top two threads off, and it's threaded pretty much down to the bottom. Anyways, that insert's pretty long. So I'm going to give that a good flush and uh, clean up the rest of the gasket surface in here. I'm going to clean up all the threads. And uh, man, this, this engine is going to be together uh, 10 times quicker than this engine. This engine was apart for years. So uh, yeah, look at all my screws are getting surface rust on them here. All my bolts and nuts. Okay, I think that's it for today's video. I got the shocks on. I really like the looks of these chrome spring shocks with the chrome springer front end. You know, it's almost the same angle coming up and the same, same angle coming down. Like it's I'll go over here so you can see a little better. So it's going to look good. Um, I measured the seat height of this Norton here. Top of this Norton here to the ground is 33 inches. My Harleys, that one's 31 inches. This one's probably between 30 and 31. So it feels like you're sitting up on top of a skateboard on this thing. You're sitting up too high. So I'm gonna drop that down at least two inches, two, three inches. Be a little bit more comfortable on the arms and the upper body. The legs might be a little bit more bent, but it'll look pretty nice. And I'm gonna order that tank next week. It's over in Port Huron. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to buck up and pay for it. You watch. The borders were open about two days after I, I ordered. I just bet because everything's starting to open over in the states now. There's like six states that are open now. This whole mask thing's a joke, big joke. We've had zero flu cases this year, zero. It's average. They say the average is between six and seven percent every year of uh, flu cases and flu deaths. Well, you know, we've got zero. So, what does that tell you? Anyways, yeah, that's where I'm at today. I'm going to finish this video up. That's it. Cheers.